Now we would like to invite Mr. Mukesh Arora from IMTAC to, to, to deliver his speech. Good morning. Um, I'm uh, really delighted to be uh, presenting today in front of uh, our distinguished guests and fellow students. Uh, the, uh, the topic of my presentation is uh, IoT in water. And obviously, since the theme of this entire event is open source, so uh, I'm definitely going to talk about uh, uh, what IoT means uh, uh, to open source or what open source means to IoT. The, uh, you may be wondering why water? Uh, why am I uh, starting this uh, presentation uh, by talking about water? Uh, because uh, before I talk about technology and open source, I want to uh, uh, sort of uh, present the facts on water and why it is important. And then uh, we will, in the second uh, part of the presentation, we will see how uh, technology, uh, which is running on top of open source, can help us uh, address uh, the, uh, the situation on water. <coughs> so. Um, Water from abundance to scarcity. Uh, the, there was a time uh, many decades ago when the world has a lot of water. And uh, uh, whether it, uh, except probably Africa, and I'll show you some slides uh, uh, on facts, uh, almost everywhere in the world we had a lot of water. So there was absolutely no issue, including in the Middle East there was a lot of water. However, in the last three decades the situation has uh, drastically changed. It has become really concerning, and uh, the, uh, if we do not wake up and uh, use technology and awareness and education in the field of water, uh, it is unlikely to uh, become extremely critical, and uh, people uh, will uh, really starve for water. So. Uh, Let's go back to 1975. In 1975, if you look at the situation uh, of water, and here uh, the parts of the world which are uh, colored in yellow and red are the parts which are uh, of concern. Okay, so in 1975, it was only parts of Africa which had issues of water. And the rest of the world was uh, either having more than the water they required or they had enough water to, uh, to take care of their daily needs. Fast forward to 2000, 2000 the whole of India, uh, you see that it's now yellow. So there is uh, already uh, stress on water. And uh, of course, uh, if you go northern, uh, up north Africa, uh, the water situation was starting becoming bad. And, uh, even in North America, the southern part of America, which had more than the required water uh, in 2000, as against 1975, had just enough water to take care of the needs. If we extrapolate this data to 2025 based on research, uh, there, there are going to be a lot of places which will uh, be stressed for water. And, uh, uh, that's why we. That's why I'm talking about this subject here today, and uh, that's why I'm trying to give you some background on why we should be concerned about water, why, why what should we do to uh, make sure that uh, this situation does not become bad to us. So, uh, how how did we reach this stage uh, where we are today? Uh, uh, what are the reasons uh, uh, that the, the situation has become so bad? Number one, most important reason is uh, the, uh, the world population is rising. And it, it's in many parts of the world, it's rising beyond control. So that means there are more people who need water. There's more consumption. Then urbanization. People are moving from non-urban cities, from villages and rural areas to the urban cities. and. Uh, in the process, obviously, uh, they need water for their daily needs. Uh, and of course, the infrastructure has to, uh, the, they need to, to make products uh, needs more water. So overall, urbanization means uh, people need more water and the city needs more water. As, as a number of people grow, uh, the agriculture produce also grows. So that means you have to grow more crops, you have to 
produce more food, everything needs water. So uh, the, uh, the production of agriculture produce uh, means uh, consumption of more water. Next is climate change, and we see it every day. Uh, even in Oman, we see uh, frequent changes in weather conditions, uh, which we never saw probably 10 years ago. Uh, and last but not the least is economic growth. As we become more prosperous, as we produce more food, as we produce more cars, so uh, there is no industrial process which you, uh, you can carry out without uh, supplying adequate water. This is a very interesting slide. So this, uh, this is just to give you a perspective or pictorial view of how bad is the situation. So uh, what this means is if uh, this is your whole water, this is the earth which, has, uh, which is largely covered with water in oceans. So the, uh, the blue circle that you see here, this one, is the total water available <coughs> which can be converted to drinking water, okay? And the uh, circle that you see here, this one, is the only water available for drinking. This is the water which is flowing on surface, what we call the surface water. This is the water which you can extract for our daily use without spending too much money, okay? So you can imagine that we have very small quantity of water available to us, and if we do not, do something about it now, this situation, this sphere is going to become smaller and uh, the situation is going to become uh, extremely alarming. Now, you don't have to read the entire table, uh, I don't think it may be visible, but I just want to read out some numbers to you. The uh, number here is interesting and number here is interesting. So we are saying out of the total water, 96 uh, about 96% of the water is in ocean. You can't go and drink it, okay? So that is 96% of the global water actually is not usable, unless you spend a lot of money in desalination. Only about 1% or less than 1% is the water which uh, you can use, okay? So uh, the, this is, uh, if you try to quantify, this is where we stand uh, uh, in terms of the availability uh, of the water which is usable. Now let's uh, talk about the usage percentage, or usage split as we call. So the 70% of water goes into agriculture, of the water which is in that small sphere that I showed you in the last slide. 16% of the water goes into industrial use, and only 14% water goes into uh, domestic or municipal use. So uh, actually, we all think that water we drink every day and we use to wash our cars and uh, do production of uh, goods is the water which we are largely consuming, but actually it's the water which we don't see which is getting consumed more, which is the water which goes into agriculture. Now since uh, the, uh, the natural supply of water is, uh, is not Since the natural supply of water is not increasing, how do we, uh, how do we ad address this situation? So there are only three ways uh, uh, which we can use to uh, address this situation. Thank you. Number one is, the, uh, is to harvest the water, number two is to conserve the water, and number three is to manage the water. Okay. And uh, you may be wondering why I'm talking about these three uh, approaches to uh, addressing the situation, because uh, you will shortly see in the uh, upcoming slides uh, that you can apply a lot of technology to address all of these uh, applications that we are talking about. So uh, technology is the enabler. Technology is uh, what uh, addresses many of the global uh, problems today, whether it is to do with water, it is to do with environment, it is to do with uh, other social issues that we are uh, struggling with uh, across the world right now. So uh, if you look at the water supply chain, uh, which is uh, sourcing to consumption point, there are some typical uh, uh, 
uh, uh, typicalities of the supply chain, or there's a typical nature of the supply chain. Number one, uh, water networks are very large. Their geography uh, is, is extremely large. They generally uh, run across the city, across multiple cities, across the state. So uh, that poses a lot of problems, and uh, we have to see and talk about how technology can be used to uh, address the situation. Number two, water pumping, uh, which is critical. We have to pump water uh, from rivers, from ponds, from dams, and pump them to the water treatment plants. And then from there, uh, you have to, once it is treated, uh, then you uh, pump them into a reservoir, and then it flows to the consumption point. Okay. So there's a lot of pumping. And pumping means uh, you're using large pumps, and uh, which consumes enormous amount of energy uh, that can be saved. And the third challenge is uh, how do you forecast what is going to be the consumption? So demand forecast uh, is something where you can use a lot of uh, statistical techniques, uh, uh, weather data, to forecast the uh, demand of water so that you can balance the demand with supply. OK, let's. Let's look at an urban scenario. So I'm, uh, in the next slide, I'm going to show you a typical water network. And then we will slowly get into how technology can be applied and how, what role open source can play here. This is a busy slide, but uh, I'll try to simplify it. Uh, and uh, so this is the source of water. So this could be, uh, for example, in Oman, we have dams. And uh, there are multiple dams from where we source water, or we, uh, we create a volume of water that we use in the uh, treatment process. So this is the source here, and these are, this is the demand side. So the left is the demand side, and the right is the source side. So uh, from the source of water, the water flows through the pipes to the treatment plant. This is a water treatment plant. Uh, okay, We have many of them here in, in Muscat and outside Muscat, so you can relate to them. And then once uh, the water is treated, then it goes into the, uh, the reservoirs from where it flows to the households, okay? And it flows to the industries, or it flows to the golf courses, it flows to uh, many other areas where there's a demand for water. You see this icon, which is uh, appearing in many places, these three, three circles, three colored circles. These are the places where uh, technology or IoT is playing a very important role to monitor or control this entire process. Okay. So right from sourcing, where uh, you see the weather station here, so you want to predict or forecast how much will be the water, how much is going to be the rainfall, how much water volume uh, I'm likely to have this year, okay. so that there's no shortage tomorrow. So you would like to monitor the weather stations uh, uh, right at the dam. This data that you will get from a weather station here is not something that you will get from Yahoo Weather or uh, AccuWeather. That's a very generic uh, weather data. So this is a very localized weather data. Then uh, there are uh, the pipelines which, in which the water is flowing. So you have to monitor the flow in the pipelines. So you have to monitor which pipeline is on and which pipeline is off. Uh, so th this is something where you can uh, remotely watch what is happening here. And by the way, this entire city that you're seeing here, which may be, let's say, 100 square kilometer or more, uh, all this information is, uh, is seen in a command center, maybe in a room like this one here. Okay. So uh, the entire process of water sourcing and water treatment and water distribution uh, can be uh, seen centrally from one location. And once the water goes into the treatment plant and it gets treated, then uh, it goes into the reservoirs and it flows to the city. And uh, again, uh, inside the city, obviously, you have to be more careful because uh, you cannot have a, an outage that people don't have enough water to drink. So uh, you monitor more uh, data points uh, inside the city. So that's how a typical uh, water supply chain looks uh, for an urban city like Muscat. So um, if you look at if you summarize the applications that we saw in the, uh, in the chart uh, in the last slide, 
Uh, we need to do water resource uh, remote monitoring using IoT. We need, or we need, or we can do water flow monitoring, which is the water flowing through ch uh, channels or through pipelines. Uh, we need to automate the uh, pumping operation, so water pumps which are running either on the sourcing side or within the city. Uh, for example, my, uh, I don't have the accurate number, but city of Muscat to supply water should be running more than uh, 1,000 pumps uh, across the city. So you can imagine the, uh, the number of pumps that need to be monitored and operated and the amount of energy it may be consuming. Then uh, the uh, treatment process. So once the water goes inside the plant, the, the entire process uh, needs to be monitored uh, because there's a lot of chemical uh, uh, dosing which needs to happen to clean water because the water is coming from sea, uh, water is coming from dam, it's, it's not drinkable water. Then uh, real-time quality monitoring. So uh, while the water is flowing through pipelines and it's uh, being stored in large overhead tanks, uh, you need to monitor the quality. And uh, I've already talked about the demand forecast uh, to estimate the requirement of water. So uh, why open source software in water? Why, what role can open source play in water? You saw in last few slides that uh, water is very typical. Uh, it's not like any other application. We are not talking about a typical IT automation project here that you have, uh, you have, let's say, 1,000 people in a company and you are running ERP or you are running email and you are running antivirus or you are running some other uh, uh, e-governance application. Here, we are talking about a very different ballgame. Here, we are talking about a very large uh, area uh, where data is coming uh, from various uh, uh, action points, and uh, the data has to come real time. So you, you cannot say I'll supply water only in the daytime and not in the night time. So it's a, it's a 24 hour operation, okay? So the, uh, the, the challenge of water and uh, what open source can uh, do to a water supply chain is very different. Uh, and uh, it's, it's very interesting how uh, uh, the role that open source can play in this entire process. The second thing is scalability. The, uh, you saw in the diagram in the last slide that there are, there are hundreds of points uh, and in a larger city thousands of points uh, where the data is getting generated and data is getting acquired. So uh, you need a very scalable and robust uh, backend software system to handle this data. And open source, uh, especially the, uh, the Linux operating system and the uh, databases that run on top of them uh, are inherently capable to handle large amounts of data. And uh, there, are, uh, there are already many, many case studies where uh, global databases are running on open source. So scalability is not, is, which is an important requirement in water, is, uh, there's no doubt how open source can handle it. This also means that there, there could be a financial impact. So for example, in water, uh, since uh, you will have software and hardware in thousands of uh, points, so if you go for a non-open source model, the cost will go extremely high because uh, uh, that model uh, may be uh, location-based, financial model or licensing model. It can be data transfer-based. So. Uh, uh, a company may say that I will charge you license fee based on the uh, per data packet or per location, okay, or, uh, or a duration. So open source, you, when you look at a city, you don't want to get into this problem of uh, doing licensing. How do you do licensing of a water supply network in a city? It becomes extremely challenging and, uh, and not cost effective. So open source can contribute big time in uh, these kind of applications. And it is pervasive in nature, so it is everywhere and it is always there. So uh, you don't want to get tied up uh, with a licensing model of a software which uh, ties you down uh, on time or data packets or locations. <coughs> so a typical deployment architecture uh, of uh, open source based IoT. Uh, 
So here we are, the case in point is water, but this is also applicable for any kind of utility. It could be a telecom network, it could be energy, it could be gas, it could be uh, any other data which is uh, city-wide or country-wide. So right here at the bottom, this is the sensing layer. This is the uh, layer uh, where software is running to acquire data from the field. So these are uh, everyday sensors, uh, right from a temperature, humidity, to uh, flow sensors and level sensors and all kinds of sensors in the world. Then, uh, there, obviously, there are gateways that are required to take this uh, live data from the sensors and convert that into packets which can be pushed to a backend software. So these gateways, all of them run software. So there's a lot of software running. There's a software running on the sensors. There's a software running on the gateways. Okay. And then uh, you use different protocols to push this data further up. And then you are running uh, application layer on top of it. So it could be energy management layer. It could be water treatment layer. It could be uh, video surveillance layer. So there are multiple backend applications running. So uh, you can guess from this, uh, this architecture that uh, in what looked like one network is actually having thousands of uh, software uh, uh, deployments of different nature. So imagine if you have to do a, a financial model of uh, a software which is paid software, and uh, you will go crazy because uh, uh, there is some software which is going inside the hardware, which is what we call as embedded software. There's some software which is more like ERP. There's some software which is being used for analytics. So it's, it's going to be extremely complex exercise. So the uh, benefits of IoT, um, uh, number one, and the issue that we started with in this presentation is conserve water. So IoT deployment in a water network helps you conserve water. Number two, save energy. Uh, we are uh, reading articles every day in the local newspapers that uh, the government is very uh, serious about uh, uh, saving energy and also uh, improving the operational efficiency. So uh, saving energy is, is, an, is become extremely critical right now uh, in the country and across the world. And people think that uh, this is uh, one area where people are uh, ignoring the uh, potential saving and which can actually fund a lot of uh, other uh, requirements. Operational efficiency. So if you have visibility, you can improve. So uh, we always say what you don't monitor, you don't improve. So uh, whether it is your uh, for students, whether it is your uh, scores uh, in every semester, if, unless you monitor them, uh, how do you improve them towards the end of the year? Or it is your blood pressure, uh, you, unless you monitor using a blood pressure machine, you don't take uh, adequate uh, medicine. Similarly, in the water network or utility network, you, unless you monitor areas, you don't know how to improve them. Okay? And, uh, so uh, monitoring is extremely uh, useful, and it's a huge benefit for uh, IoT here. And uh, lastly is the demand forecasting. I want to show you a typical dashboard on how people are monitoring uh, this entire uh, supply chain from one single screen. So uh, this is a typical example of a machine which you can imagine as a, water, a large pump which is pushing water in the city. And uh, it is showing in real time for how many hours today the pump has been running. Okay, so this is real time. This data is coming every 10 minutes. Then uh, what is the energy consumed uh, today? So right now, if, if I want to see, okay, since 12.00 uh, uh, hours last night, how much energy I've consumed? So this is, uh, and third one is how much money I have spent on uh, running this pump. Similarly, I can uh, have a comparison of one pump against the other pump and see today, yesterday, day before, week to date, month to date, and year to date. So you can have dashboard which can help you monitor just, uh, just about anything uh, which is happening in the field. Okay. And uh, 
This data is available on mobile devices. This data is available in a central uh, command center. This is web-based. And uh, uh, you, can, you can create alerts and alarms. So you can say if I spend more than 100 reals every day on a particular uh, uh, machine, uh, then I should get an alert because I don't expect to do it. So uh, with these kind of uh, IoT dashboards, you can uh, do a number of very interesting things, and you can actually start saving money in real time. That's about it. If there are any questions, I can answer them. I think we are running slightly ahead of time, so we can definitely take some questions if you have, uh, else I can take them offline. Okay, thank you very much, and you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.